Hi, this is Terence Wu, Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to go through a conjugate heat transfer example using SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. This analysis is for a cold plate sitting in an open air-filled environment with heat generated at the top surface and refrigerant flow through the cooling tube. This is a conjugate heat transfer problem because we need to consider both conduction through the solid material and convection for the fluid flow. In fact, we have two different fluids. Let's take a look at the setup for this problem. Because air surrounds the model, this is an external analysis. We want conduction turned on, and we want to include gravity so that hot air rises and natural convection currents occur. We have two fluids to consider, air and the refrigerant, and our plate is made of aluminum. The external fluid volume is filled with air, and I've defined a fluid subdomain to set the fluid inside the tube as the refrigerant. Flow into the tube is at 1 gram per second at negative 5 degrees Celsius, and there's atmospheric pressure at the outlet. Heat is generated at the top surface of the plate at 200 watts, and the key parameters that we're looking to determine are the maximum steady state temperatures of the fluid and solid. That's all the setup that's required, so at this point we hit run and let the software do its thing. To keep this video short though, I'll use the magic of TV to take my pre-cooked results out of the oven. We can take a look at a cut plot and see how the coolant changes temperature throughout the tube, starting at negative 5 degrees and reaching about 80 by the outlet. A cut plot in a different plane shows the temperature profile of the surrounding air. And we can animate this plot to get a better idea of how that looks throughout the model. We can take a look at the flow velocity inside the tube and see that it increases speed as it heats up. Now for the temperature at the top of the plate, we can use a surface plot and find that the maximum temperature of about 97 degrees is in this region over here. Now if we're not happy with these results, what do we do? We go make a change to our design and then run another analysis. One of the great things about using a CFD tool directly inside of SOLIDWORKS is that it's really easy to do this. I can make a change, maybe increase the size of the tube, and flow simulation is going to pick up on that change. All I have to do is hit run again to see if my design is improved. And configurations can be used to try out different designs simultaneously. So I have a second set of results for a larger tube where the max temperature is about half a degree lower. And I have a third set of results for a longer plate where the max temperature is 10 degrees lower. This ability to make changes and see the effect on performance is great because it makes it easy to play around with different scenarios and improve designs quickly. So in this video, we took a look at the setup for a conjugate heat transfer problem with both convection and conduction, and we checked out some of the options available for viewing the results. For a step-by-step -step guide for this example, follow the link to our blog, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more useful videos.